We are trying out The Council, Episode 1. This is an adventure game that came out in 2018. The first of five episodes, and I do believe that all five episodes are out by this point. It's on Steam, this is described as a narrative adventure game. And when you say those words to me, I imagine a Quantic Dream game. So I guess that is the, that's the bar that I'm comparing this to. Will it live up to that bar, that lofty goal? We will see. Let us play. That's kind of a weird menu. Look at that. Swinging around like that as I move the mouse. Uh, let's go save game one. Let's go to a new game. Let's see what the council is about. It takes place in France. In 1793, the 1792, the council, the candle was obscuring it. Oh, is that us? <clears throat> Stop! You're not getting anywhere with this Von Borschert. You know, I kind of get the same feeling, my dear Sarah. Listen. Nothing. Not a sound. No one's coming to save you. Huh. That's what you think. The Golden Order knows exactly where we are. <laughs> By the time your ridiculous secret society turns up, I'll be long gone. As for you, nothing will remain of your body. <laughs> These are some faces. Mother's head, asking you alive. You know, Louis, I have no intention of beating your dear mother. There are more persuasive ways of making you talk. You've stolen something from me that I intend to get back. Where have you hidden it? Von Borschert, you can't sell that book on the black market anymore. This is finished. We know you're planning on selling at one of Lord Mortimer's parties. All right? Just tell us who the buyer is and we can make a deal. You've no idea of the trouble you've gotten yourselves into. Oh, but you will tell me where it's hidden. I can promise you that. Oh, stop annoying our host, Louis. Son, didn't what happened to you in Rome teach you anything? Ah, yes, Rome. It was like yesterday. A few more minutes and my concoction will be ready. With this, your bodies will dissolve in less than four hours. You'll see. It loosens tongues in no time. You know, I have to admit, Mother, the only thing you've ever taught me is that damn motto of yours. Always remain rational and open. I got it. I've opened our shackles. Draw him over here. I'll take care of him. Von Borchard! Von Borchard! Hmm? Listen, let's make a deal. I'll tell you where the book is if you let my mother go free. Oh, what are you playing at? Don't worry, mother. You want to play the hero. Pity you're not in any position to do so. For the last time. Where is Alazif? Let me do this. Trust me. Uh... Yeah, let's trust her. Because I don't know what I'm doing. Be my guest, Mother. Mm. Ah. Ah. Well done, Louis. You reacted perfectly. How do you feel, Mother? Couldn't be better. He's alive so I can question him after we get back. Pity he's just a middleman. Hmm. Means I haven't finished with this case. Oh, I had a feeling you'd be running off on one of your adventures again, Mother. You know what? I'm warning you. This time, I'm coming with you. No. Even though you impress me more and more, I have to do this on my own. Mother, you're no spring chicken anymore. Come on, let's go home. And don't forget to send our men to tend to Von Borchardt.
And another victory for our wacky mother-son detective duo, I guess. We stole a book. That guy wanted it back. He's not getting it back. What happens a month later, though? Does that guy try to get his book back? Only one way to find out. On Lord Mortimer's Island... You just had to pick up Von Burchard's trail on your own, didn't you? You ditch me in Paris with no explanation, and off you go to infiltrate one of the world-renowned receptions of this Lord Mortimer, and now he writes me to say that you've gone missing on his private island? Which, by the way, looks more like a big rock than a paradise island. Oh no, what happened to Mom? Has she become a mad one? I can only hope not. The least he could do is explain to me how he managed to lose you. In any case, it is time for you to stop all this, Mother. It no longer suits your age. I like to think he's just talking to himself right now. You once again, slogging through the caves beneath the island. Like audibly mumbling to himself. Object that you just can't live without. I'm already hating this trip, and all I've done is think about it. Just angrily talking to himself about Mom. invited me. Well now, Duchess, we find ourselves both invited by Sir Hall. Well, how very amusing. Perhaps we have some common interests, Your Eminence. Is this your first time at one of Lord Mortimer's legendary parties? Legendary? We have been friends since long ago. But as I'm doing some business with Sir Hall, the invitation came from him. Well, I Father gets down with Lord Morty all the time. You good, sir. What brings you here? Uh... A business with Lord Mortimer. Lord Mortimer asked me to join him. We have some business to take care of. Oh, how mysterious. You adapt quickly, my son. You get along here like a fish in water. Would you believe that we are all here hoping to solve our personal issues? You'll see. Right. I doubt that you came here to look for your mother, your eminence. Anyway, consider yourself fortunate, young man, because there are many who dream of simply one day setting foot on this island, and only a very few ever make it. Indeed, I imagine this must be your first time here. Uh, let's turn the question back on the Duchess. And you, Duchess? You seem to be quite accustomed to things here. Am I right? I do not think that one can ever get accustomed to what Lord Mortimer prepares for his guests. But you are right. This is not the first time I've been on this wharf. If you've come back again, I imagine you must find it to be of some interest. Here, everything is possible if you make the right choices. It really is up to you whether you leave better off or not. Please excuse me if you find me overly curious, young man. I did not mean to cause you any embarrassment. Come, Duchess. They are waiting for us. We're moving, Monsieur de Richet, if you would like to join us. I'm coming, Duchess. A cardinal? A duchess? I wonder if all the guests here are this prestigious. If I'd known, I, I would have gone for a better suit. Are you all right? Oh no, my spider sense. It's done. Did you put it in a safe place? Yes. I made sure no one was following me. Don't worry, Sarah. No one's going to find it. Are you absolutely sure? Yes, I'm sure. Right. Just one thing left to do. No, Mother! No! Don't! Don't! What? 
Have you lost your mind? There is no other way. If you, if you kill me, you won't find it. That is the point, my dear. No one must ever put their hands on it again. No. But I trusted you. No, Sarah. Don't. No. No! <gasps> you can run if you want to, Sarah. But you will pay. Did we just pass a shivers check? You. Uh, Louis, are you all right? What's going on? Here, take this. I'm sorry. Keep it. Are you better? I'm fine. Don't worry. It's getting late. Why don't why don't you go on ahead and I'll catch up with you, okay? Are you sure? Yes. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sure, yes. Fine. I definitely have to find Mother quickly. Mother's murdering again. Or what? This can't be real. The, the Duchess arrived with me. What's happening to me, for God's sake? I absolutely need to find you, Mother. Louis, during the trip, I had something I wanted to ask you, but we didn't happen to run into each other. Yes, Duchess? I'm not sure if you remember, but we've met before. At that time, you were of two minds as to your choice of career. Tell me, what have you been up to since? Oh, okay, we don't remember meeting her. Uh, and I guess we get to pick our backstory. Are we a diplomat? The diplomat shines in society. A talented speaker, he avoids faux pas, and he can convince those with whom he is talking without offending them. Politics is his field of predilection. The occultist is a master of deception. Convinced of the importance of knowledge, he has acquired extensive expertise in science and the arts. Using others to achieve his own ends does not bother him. Detective. The detective excels in investigation. He is trained to notice every detail in his surroundings, as well as in people he questions. A hands-on man, he does not shy away from the direct approach. Um, oh. Like, we get sub-skills, politics, etiquette, linguistics, conviction, diversion. Manipulation, occultism, erudition, scientist, subterfuges. And questioning, vigilance, psychology, agility, logic. The legendary agility of detectives. Um, well, I mean, clearly we got hit by some sort of magic vision. Let's go all in on that. Let's see, I have seven effort seven effort points to use in my skills. My past granted me one skill point in manipulation. My past granted me one skill point in psychology. Okay, the diversion. Logic. Science. So, okay, well, I mean, I, I guess one is as good as anything else. I mean, we won't, we, I guess we'd have to play a while before we got a good idea of what was actually useful on the skill tree. In all sorts of unsolved cases. Have you ever heard of the Abbey of Hexham? Uh, vaguely. An ingenious scam involving mass manipulation on a scale never seen before. Hmm. There was a cavern under the Abbey, wasn't there? Exactly. The wind would blow in through spouts, creating a, a terrifying howling sound. So, to stop the howling, the priests called for offerings from the peasants. And if they brought enough money, I'm guessing the priests stopped the howling. A perfect trick to fool simple souls. Admit it, Duchess. That story kept you in suspense, didn't it? Yes, it did. I'm delighted to find out that you were the young and brilliant French investigator. For someone who only remembers the case vaguely, your memories are very clear. Well, they say I have the memory of two people. But please, call me Emily. Fine, Emily. Tell me, 
I was actually helped on that case by my mother. You wouldn't know her by any chance. Wait, Louis. We've already met. You do remember me, don't you? Not at all so lie to her. Not at all sorry. Uh, well, I mean, since we're an occultist, uh, let us practice the art of deception. How could I forget a woman such as yourself? A woman such as me? What a sweet talker you are. Remind me of how we met. Okay, skills give me access to unique choices and actions at the cost of effort points. The higher my skill level, the lower the cost and effort points. Browse my skills by using the character tab in the menu. Most probable place would be Paris? Chatter up, it'll make a loser train of thought. But my feelings are hurt! Emily, it hurts me that you could doubt my sincerity. I thought we'd gotten past that stage by now. Don't take it like that, Louis. I was only joking. I thought you were making fun of me. I thought you were someone I could trust. I'm, I'm hurt to see that you're still at the stage of testing me, Duchess. Listen, Louis, I am sorry. I really didn't want to hurt you. Forget what I just said. It was clumsy of me. If you say so. Let's go with that, then. Didn't see me, didn't know me. Push any harder and I'll make a fool of myself. Right, time to go to the manor. All right, opportunities. My skills allow me to discover hidden details. Select, select the object that's the most suggestive, suggestive of the situation to discover them. Opportunities do not consume if effort points to access the skill required for the situation. I need to have just unlocked it. I ask her a question, she answers with another. Is she playing with me? I, I observed her lips. Each person you meet on the island has their own personality, which makes them vulnerable to certain skills and immune to others. Exploiting their personality is crucial to achieve your personal goals. Skills used against immunities will not succeed and leave you exhausted. Meanwhile, exploited vulnerabilities will give you one effort point back. Let's see. Immunity revealed. Vulnerability revealed. Push the enter button to access my menu pages. Or I could validate by hold. Excuse my insisting, but you still haven't answered about my mother. Do you know her? You'll see, Louis. Everybody here knows Sarah de Richet. Oh, mom's famous here. I don't know where we're going like this, Emily. But you're connected to my mother one way or another. And if I can believe my vision, you don't have much of a place in her heart. All right, I obtained talents when carrying out certain actions. Remember to review their unlock condition. I will not review those things. I'm sorry, game. Let's uh, go up to the manor and uh, witness one of uh, Lord Herbert's legendary meth parties. Good evening, sir. May I ask your name, please? Louis Moras de Richet. Monsieur de Richet, delighted to welcome you among us, sir. You must be Sarah de Richet's son. I must tell you, we are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. Where is Lord Mortimer? I have an appointment with Lord Mortimer. Would you be so kind as to lead me to him? Unfortunately, sir, I cannot. I don't know exactly where my master is. But rest assured, sir, everyone is waiting for you at the manor. Sir Holm insists on welcoming you in person. Since your mother went missing, Everyone has been concerned about finding her. Who is Sir Holm? A close friend of Lord Mortimer's. Please, rest assured, sir, it won't take us long to find your revered mother. Indeed, we are searching the caves again because lights were seen at the wharf just last night. Where we are now? Indeed, sir. According to our information, lights were seen in the middle of the night, sir. After verification, none of the guests seemed to have left the manor last night. We think that perhaps Sir's mother was here. Have you found... Oh, that's locked. Any witnesses? Did anyone see anything else? Unfortunately not, sir. Only lights were seen by servants of the manor, sir. And as I was saying, sir, all the guests were asleep, and no one seems to have noticed anything at all. We seem to have found an object that would appear to belong to Sir's mother. A handkerchief. Oh, you have it on you. It's embroidered with the initials SDR. We came to the conclusion that they are the initials of Sir's mother, Sarah de Richet. I have orders to give it to Lord Mortimer as soon as I see him. I know my mother. She's not the kind to go for a midnight stroll on the wharf for nothing. 
I've got to find There's out. There's so many lines on his face when he does that. Where did you find the handkerchief? On the landing dock, sir. The one you arrived by. What? Lock. You will kindly give me the handkerchief. Pass me the handkerchief. But, but, sir, my orders were to give it to my master. Are you refusing to give me my own mother's personal belongings? Even though she was greatly looking forward to meeting your master, she's gone missing. And you seem incapable of finding her. Oh, but, sir, please. And to top it all off, you refuse to give me the handkerchief that she so often let me use? Ew. Deserve such little consideration in your eyes? Is that what you wish me to report to your master? No, certainly not, sir. Please forgive me, sir. I have been such an idiot. Here you are. I was not aware that Sir did not have his own hanky to wish to blow his nose. I did not know Sir needed his mommy's hanky whenever his nose was stuffed. If I had known that, I surely would have turned it over to Sir immediately. out here on this wharf. What's that? Way I'm leaving without finding out about mother. Uh, Latin inscription. Oh, there we go. And Nessis, mi fili quantilia produncia mundus vergatur. Trans, uh, let's see. Translate the text. You don't know, my son, how little wisdom the world is governed with. I tend to agree. Valuable information. No way I'm leaving without finding out about Mother. Okay, so I guess we just have to... We're not going to go up to the meth party before we find out more about Mother. Looks like the barrel's been broken for quite some time. Hopefully Sir Harvey doesn't mind us being late. Oh, there's a path this way. Why don't we, why don't we go on that? Open the gate, why not? Rattle, rattle. I'll never get it open barehanded. Pick the lock. Ah, there we are. There we go. Royal Jelly restores two effort point. I can't carry more than five. Honey, the remedy of the gods. It didn't say honey. It said Royal Jelly. It's not... That's not the same thing. This looks like a pistol case, but it's empty. I don't know if this has anything to do with you, Mother, but if it does, at least now you're armed. Just like in my vision. And none of it's telling me anything useful. Stupid vision. Try being try being helpful next time. Strange magical vision of the future. Hmm, this wharf is used as storage for a lot of barrels. Examine it. Uh -huh. What have we here? It's cannon powder. Examine. The powder's wet. Not surprising, given the dampness of the dock. It's unusable now. I don't know what the person who left this barrel like this had in mind, but it's a waste. Apparently, someone on this island has gone through a whole lot of trouble to arm themselves. I really must find you, dear mother. And quickly, too. Board. Yes. Examine it. Probably comes from this part of the wharf. The wood is slightly eaten away, of course, but it still would have been fine if it weren't smashed. Ah, more royal jelly. 
So, okay, we can eat the royal jelly to restore effort points. The golden elixir cures negative alterations. The devil's thorn temporarily relieves, reveals the immunities and vulnerabilities affecting a dialogue choice. Carmelite water, next skill use, is free. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, more royal jelly. This chest might belong to Duchess Hillsborough. Must be an incredible view from up there. Impossible to set foot on the island without being seen from 300 meters away. A sack of seeds. It's unopened. No one seems to have used any. Looks like a bar from an old gate. This miserable old bar has been broken fairly recently. The edges are still clean, and the tip is blackened. Without analysis to the contrary, I put my money on cannon powder. Take the bar. This might just come in handy. Shove it in my pants. There we go. Yep, I'm not holding it. In the pants it went. A lot of this royal jelly, which is good because we have been using these points. Some rope. Apparently no one's touched for a good long time. Let's see what's hidden inside. Ooh, mail. Let's look. Call Cory or Galbraith. Envelope has ideograms on it. It's Mr. Joaquina da Silva, Silva Javier. I don't know if we'll only be able to do one. Let's do the mysterious ideograms. Hmm. A letter written in an oriental language. I know that. La I don't know that language. I have the slightest idea what it says. Uh, what about Carl Corey? It's too badly written. I, I can't make out the address. R. Galbraith? The address is 50 Bedford Square, London. So I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't know about the historical accuracy of there being a mailbox at the dock like this. I guess it's not impossible that it could have worked like that. I wouldn't have thought it would. The address is in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That reminds me, it's about time the order sent some envoys there. Let's look at the other letters. Probably a Dutchman. Ah, don't need to read his mail, I guess. What about the Cardinal? This envelope is meant for the Vatican. I know this name. Apparently this letter is meant for Pope Pius VI, born Giovanni Brasci. I wonder which one of these people is influential enough to write to the Pope in person. We met a cardinal. We just met him a few minutes ago. Mr. Samuel Ritter de Choy. Name rings a bell. Samuel Ritter de Choy. Mother, you test me even when you're not here. It's an anagram of Louis Moras de Richet. You wanted to write to me then. Let's see what's inside this letter. So. Dear Samuel, my stay on Lord Mortimer's Island is going wonderfully well. As I find myself in such charming company, I plan to stay a few more weeks. Would you be so kind as to send me a gift that I'd like to give to our old friend Manuel Godoy? I would be most grateful. I have been told that he's going to join us here soon. I would like to mark the occasion. Thank you in advance. Yours devotedly, Sarah Faustine de Richet. What is your game here, Mother? 
What are these strange turns of phrase? I've never heard you speak like that. What's going on here? That you write to me under a pen name. Okay, but here you go even further by trying to avoid raising any suspicions should anyone else read it. I wonder if this Godoy is the person you came looking for. Think. Godoy, Godoy, Mano Godoy. Why does that name sound so familiar? Uh, I don't remember. I'm guessing he's a man of some importance. Spanish, I'd say. But just can't put a face to him. Well, hope we meet to talk about it soon, Mother. I don't know what you've gotten yourself into this time, but I'll bet you've got a lot to tell me. Man, Mom was writing us the letter saying to bring a gift so she could give it to the guy, and we did not bring a gift with us. We're, we're unprepared here. I guess we'll go up to the manor. How did Mortimer manage to build his manor at the top of a rocky outcrop? Ah, my son. I was looking for you. What can I do for you, Your Eminence? I wanted to ask you. You are the son of Sara de Riche, aren't you? That is my mommy, yes. You see, your mother and I were supposed to meet here on this very spot. I was supposed to hand her a very important envelope. But I haven't seen her. If only Mother had told me why she was coming here. Anyway, I ought to take the envelope. It might have something to do with her disappearance. Listen, if it will- Confrontation start! Okay, during a confrontation, you have to go through several steps while being as persuasive as possible. Confrontations have consequences on the rest of the story. Do not hesitate to use your skills. Each confrontation displays an interface showing how much the person you are talking to is convinced. Okay. Thank you, my son. Gotta fill the con Got three blunders left. Oh man, but I make so many blunders. Take it personally. Would you happen to know if your mother has arrived yet? <laughs> Never mind. Give me your letter. No, we do know she's been here. Certainly, your eminence. Mother got here some time ago. I was hoping to find her when I arrived, but given the hour, she must be asleep by now. Right. I shall see her tomorrow, then. By the way, your eminence, I wasn't aware you knew my mother. Ah, if you only knew, my son, I hold your mother in the highest regard. She has rendered great service to the church, and her help is invaluable. I hope that you will follow in her footsteps. If only she had told me where she was headed. Nonetheless, our exchanges have always been discreet, and I should like them to remain as such. If your mother wishes to speak to you about us one day, I will not mind if she does so. That is very commendable. But since we work together on a daily basis, it's, it's surely just an oversight. Most certainly. You said you work together. What do you do exactly? See, we're members of the Golden Order. Professional secret. Our business is confidential. Be it mother or myself, our motto has always been discretion in all things. And to promise to never betray a word of honor. Was your secret safe with Mother? It will be even more so with me. You have convinced me. The mystery with which your mother manages her business proves that she carries your motto close to her heart. 
Your words seem sincere, my son. All the same, it bothers me to see you in a quandary, Your Eminence. Is there any other solution? Look, if it's of any help, you can always leave your envelope with me, and I'll give it to her as soon as I see her. Uh, I uh, hesitate. Up till now, we have always dealt with her in person, and that has always been successful. Do you think I should give it to you? Let's see. Depends on what it contains. Pretend I don't want it. Give it to her if I find it. Count on me. Can I use the royal jelly in the middle of this? Yeah, I can. Pretend I don't want it. Look, you seem hesitant. The simplest thing to do is just to give it to her when you see her. After all, it's not that urgent. Yes. I mean, yes, it's urgent. I mean, what if we don't find each other here on the island? Though I don't know yet when I'll be leaving. I might not be staying for very long. Hmm, what to do? Can you see a solution? Come on, just give me the letter for crying out loud. I cannot run the risk alone. I am going to trust you. You seem like an honest man. Bingo! Listen to me, my child. If I give you the letter, can you promise me before God that no one other than your mother would read it? Last step. For the last step of a confrontation, you must convince the person you're talking to by giving a positive answer. If you give a bad answer, the step will repeat itself until you either give a right one or you have no blunders. The last step of a confrontation will repeat itself if you fail. Okay, so... Okay, no worries, dude! No, thank you. No. Promise. I don't believe in your god. Your eminence, that's just not possible for me. Why is that? I've always had a Cartesian mind, and I won't make false promises. I respect you too much for that. I spend my time trying to find logical and reasonable answers to problems which, at first glance, may seem supernatural. I'm not saying I don't believe in God as a concept. I just don't believe in the God of your sacred texts. And I don't want to lie to you. Even though your answer does shock me, my son, I shall only hear your honesty. Listen. Let's stop there. I'm going to tell you a secret, Monsieur de Ricci. Your mother and I are organizing the escape of a large number of French priests who face a massacre organized by the accursed Republican tribunals. The church is literally being bled like a beast. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. She has made the services of your order available to us by organizing the priest's safe passage across the borders. Even if she does not share all our convictions, she always provided assistance. Young man, you can be proud to be her son. Be it only for her sake. Always respect your name. Here, the letter I spoke of. It includes a list of about 15 names ready for departure. Be quick. Remember to tell Sarah when you see her. That time is short. Well played. I'll decide later when I'm alone whether to look at what it contains. Well, he, just, he just told us. I mean, I guess he might be lying, but... Many clues and items are hidden. Some of them will have an impact on your adventure. Do not hesitate to look for them. All right, so we completely steamrolled that conversation... I assume they would not all be so easy. Well, also, it's because we had the royal jelly. Num, num, num. I have used four consumable items during a single quest uh, or consumed a noxious element. Dialogue timer is no longer visible. Use a golden elixir to cure myself. Which, uh, let's see. No, not that. Not inventory. Let's see. I ate too much royal jelly. Uh, I do not have any golden elixirs. I, do, I, I, must, I, I wish there was like an animation for eating the royal jelly in the middle of that conversation. Lives of the Noble Greeks and Romans by Plutarch. A biography of the great men. 
I flipped through it. Open to Brutus's page. Caesar, stabbed by multiple blows at once, sees Brutus raise the dagger on him. Then, covering his head with his robe, he delivers himself to the arms of the conspirators. Nice family. Let's keep it. Might come in handy someday. Yoink! Manuscripts allow you to educate yourself during the adventure. At the start of each quest, you can choose what to read and gain permanent skill points. All right, this is mine now. I thought my chimney was big, but this one is beyond belief. It's the least one can say. I've been longing for a warm fire for ages. Since I set foot on the island, I haven't ventured more than two yards away from it. Have you also just arrived? Oh, late morning, I'd say. Louis, come join us. Monsieur, may I introduce you to Monseigneur His Eminence, Cardinal Piaggi? He joins us straight from Rome. Oh, just call me Your Eminence. It's simpler. George Washington, President of the United States of America. Delighted at last to make your acquaintance, Mr. President. Pleased to meet you, Mr. President. Louis Maurras de Richet. It is an honor to meet you. Young man, let's keep it simple, please. Let us forget our fancy titles. Nice to meet you, Louis. I should imagine you never thought you'd be in such company. I must admit that I didn't. It's the first time that I've ever met so many illustrious personalities. And you haven't seen anything yet. Generally, when Lord Mortimer organizes one of his receptions, there are over a dozen people here. They can't all be here yet. And you'll see, most of the time there's only the upper crust. And I noticed you were already getting to know his eminence at the entrance. It's the perfect place to build up a network. What were you talking about, if you forgive my indiscretion? Let's see, my mother about a letter. About the surprising main door. Or let's avoid the subject. Um, I don't have many points left. Why don't we just set, talk about my, my, my mommy? We were talking about my mommy. His eminence had an envelope to give to my mother, initially. Because your mother was supposed to join us. That's right. She arrived a few weeks ago. Several weeks at Lord Mortimer's? Hmm. She must be a special guest. If you know what I mean. Oh, pity. No scrumptious gossip or juicy tidbits, unmentionable secrets, or even money matters. But you'll see, it will come. Despite all the goodwill in the world, you can't stop people scheming left and right around oh. here. Give Mr. President the juiciest gossip. <laughs> well, my friends, do any of you know the reason why we're here this time? Not in the slightest. As for me, I've been invited by Sir Horn, a close friend of Lord Mortimer, but uh, I do not know the reason why. You see, Louis, every time Lord Mortimer organizes a reception, he always finds a moment to set up a chat with all the guests. During which time we remake the world. Accompanied by gallons of absinthe and cussing, I'll leave you to imagine the result. Is it orgies? If I understand rightly, Monsieur de Richet, you've come out here to join your mother. For what reason, exactly? She's gone missing. Invent a story. Let's let's test our conceptualization. Like you, Mr. President, I'm here as a result of Lord Mortimer's invitation. Two members of the same family here. That is rare. You know what they say. You can pick your nose, but you can't pick your family. <laughs> oh, you. Seriously, though, I know your mother well. Stay behind with me afterwards. And we'll take a moment to speak about her. Everyone knows mom. Oh, uh. Good lord. Washington is wearing the emblem of the Grand Master of the Golden Order. It's the highest distinction of the Order in the United States. It puts him on par with my mother. He must really know his stuff when it comes to the occult. Good evening, my friends. Holy shit. That's the man for my vision. An urgent case. Oh, Jesus. Lord Mortimer. He can't be present this evening, and he sends his deepest apologies. He's at <laughs> he hasn't even turned. That's terrifying. Start. Ask that man? 
Do you know that man? Sir Gregory Holm, an English aristocrat, very influential. He's also close to Lord Mortimer, so don't be surprised if he acts like he's at home. And now, my dear guests, a light meal is served in the small salon. For those who would like to, you're invited to follow me into the next room. My dear fellow, you must have read my thoughts. I shall follow. We'll have to be careful not to make too much noise. One of Lord Mortimer's guests is relaxing. Oh, we shall be quiet. Don't take it the wrong way, Sir Holm, but I have already eaten. Thus, I shall be happy to remain by the fireside. If you don't mind, Gregory, I should like to keep Mr. Washington company. Please feel at home. And you, sir? If I stay with Washington, we'll be able to speak about my mother. But on the other hand, I'd like to learn more about this home. I saw him in my vision. I want to know how much George Washington knows about the dark arts. Let's see what Washington has to say. Sir, if you don't mind, I shall stay here. Do exactly as you please, young man. Louis, thank you for staying. Just like you, when I arrived this morning, I found out that Sarah had gone missing. I know your mother well. Extremely well. Emily is from the English branch of the Golden Order. And President Washington is in fact the leader of the Order in the United States. I, I didn't know. Sorry to have made you wait, but I didn't want to speak in front of the others. You did well. Secrecy and discretion are the pillars of our organization. If I can help in any way at all, please don't hesitate to ask, my lad. And if you have any other questions, now's the time. Uh, let's see, where does Emily know my mother from? Tell me about this mortar. Tell me more, I wanna know more about mom. And you, Emily, what do you think of my mother? I only know her through the order. The one time we met, we only exchanged a few words in a corridor of parliament. And was the exchange courteous or impassioned? I'm not sure if I understand. Was there any reason for her to be angry with you? Under other circumstances, I would slap your face for even asking. But I'll put your lack of tag down to her disappearance. Know that your mother is a woman I would love to work with. Her reputation is entirely deserved. Mr. Washington will be able to tell you more. Mr. Washington. You seem to be very familiar with my mother. How did you come to know my mother, Mr. President? Where did you first meet her? I met Sarah during the War of Independence on American soil. She was introduced to me by a mutual acquaintance, and I must say that her sound advice prevented me from making some terrible mistakes. She may not be a soldier, but believe me, she deserves a statue as much as Lafayette does. Well, I didn't see that one coming. There's no doubt Mother has many secrets that are still hidden. Right. Would it be too much if I asked you a few more questions? Not at all. Go ahead. But I can't promise I'll remember everything. May I ask, when you saw each other, what did you talk about? Politics locked. The mysteries that surround us or the golden order? What about the mysteries that surround us? My mother has always been fascinated by strange powers. Did she talk to you about anything like that? Yes. Her facility for discerning truths from rumor served me well. Such as preventing massacres, like the one at Salem, from happening again. Or convincing people that horsemen cannot ride around without heads. <laughs> what was it that she used to say now? Keep an open and logical mind? Yes, that's it. Thank you, sir. I was hoping to speak with Lord Mortimer. At least now I have some information, thanks to you. I repeat, Lord Mortimer is a man of his word. You won't be disappointed. And I am persuaded that your mother's research is his main concern. What if Mother has left the island? I wonder if Mother is still on the island. Could she not have taken a boat and left? I don't see how. No vessel can moor closer than 200 yards, not to mention the permanent presence of staff and servants. There is one strange thing, I grant you. This island is barely the size of Delaware, and despite that, no one has been able to locate your mother. 
So my mother still must be on the island. Don't worry, Louis. I'm sure nothing bad has happened to her. Yes, I, I hope not. Careful, they're coming back. Wow, that's a nice mohawk. Well, I am impressed with all this splendor. But don't spend too much time with Mr. Washington, my dear, or you'll lose your pretty accent. Statue. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It is remarkable. Lord Mortimer is fond of atypical works of art. I won't disguise the fact that I find it all a little megalomaniacal. But I must say, he does have some outstanding pieces. Uh, validate or that? So, who oh, is I failed the opportunity. Elizabeth Adams, Mr. President. She would have liked to have stayed with us, but the poor thing is exhausted. Elizabeth Adams? Miss Adams is here to rest. You have perhaps already come across her in the corridors. She arrived a few days ago. I perceived her, but we weren't introduced. Rest assured, she is not here for the same reasons as yourselves. Consequently, I'm counting on your indulgence. On that note, it's very late. You must be exhausted. The servant will accompany you to your rooms. Don't be off put by the servant's mask. That's just so we don't have to animate his mouth. It's fine. Ladies, gentlemen, I bid you all good night. Mr. President, your eminence, Duchess, you have the same rooms as usual. You, Monsieur de Richet, will find your room at the end of the corridor. Well, my friends, I am born tired. I am off to my bed. See you in the morning. Good night, sir. I shall do likewise. Louis, I shall see you in the morning. Sleep well. Good night. See you tomorrow. Oh, man. It's been quite a day. Right. Where is my room? I'm bone tired, but not too tired to bone, if you understand my meaning. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Duke Manuel Godoy. Oh, Godoy. That's the guy's name that we were trying to remember. Huh, that's me. Right. So what shall I do with this letter? It might be about my mother's disappearance. But if I open it, I'll be betraying Piaggi's trust. What should I do? We can't betray Piaggi's trust. Damn. Can't wait to open it, but I gave my word to Piaggi, so... I want to open it. Can't wait. Wow. <laughs> nice room. Mortimer sure doesn't do things halfway. Carmelite water gives me the focused state. The next skill will cost no effort. Can't carry more than five. Great, honey. Num 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 num. I'm already drunk on honey though. All right, I guess we'll move away. That's just that's just a nice view.
Okay, I guess that was the entire first episode. Successes, went up to the manor, found clues about Mother on the docks, convinced Piaggi to trust me with his letter, met Mr. Washington, remained in the Grand Hall to speak with Mr. Washington, asked questions about Mom, failed, did not find all the clues about Mom on the docks. I did not pick up the book on the quay. Alternate pass, I could have joined Sir Home in the small salon. I could have made an unexpected encounter. We made it to level two. I can assign points. Well, of course, we want to be up to date with our knowledge of occultism, don't we now? Why wouldn't we want to? Why wouldn't we want to do that? I can choose what to read during the adventure. Each manuscript uh, I read confers skill points at the end of the quest. Parallel lives. The Archdoxes of Magic. <laughs> oh, it's magic dream time. Your turn? The servants are not very efficient. Durache can't be far away. They'll find her soon. Their search time is restricted given that they must keep an eye on Adams. I can take care of her, you know. Yes. Well, in any case, I do thank you for bringing her to the island. From what I've understood, the search of Durache's room hasn't turned up any results. Not yet, no. But we've put her son in there. Perhaps he'll find something. Hmm. That might come in handy. Louis grows impatient at not yet having met the famous Lord Mortimer. He will meet him tomorrow. Oh, what a pity to lose a knight at the start of the game. Are you waiting for someone? A young French soldier. During our game of chess? Don't worry, Gregory. The game won't disappear. I'll have one of my men escort you back. Don't trouble yourself. I know my way out. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. Please forgive me for this late hour. It is never too late. And we have much to discuss. One last move? Don't worry. Our games always seem to end like this. Or always start like this. Come, come. Take a seat, my friend. All right. I guess Napoleon is in the house. Nighttime stroll, Mr. President. There's nothing like it for a good night's sleep. Do not hesitate to ask a servant to show you back. The corridors seem quite safe. Peppermint, lime flower, and valerian. My miracle remedy when one can't get to sleep. A very good night to you, Mr. President. Thank you. And to you too, sir. Oh no, our nose is bleeding again from our magic visions. How embarrassing. Can't talk to the president like this. I'm coming. Hurry to answer the door. Well, we won't be hurrying to answer the door because we've been at it for an hour now. So I think our tryout of the council uh, has come to its end.
And uh, we did finish at least the first part of episode one anyway, so it seems like it would be a good point to stop anyway. Um, all right, so a very mysterious, twisty plot about a guy who just he just wants his mom. He just says, Where, where'd mom go? Where did mom? Everyone knows mom, it turns out. We're learning that mom has a lot of important friends, and she she comes to the orgy palace all the time to do all the meth and uh, get in the pile with George Washington. You know the pile. You know, it's in the... We'll, well, I'm sure we'll see it later. Um, and now our, our character here, Louis, has come to uh to be initiated in those ways and uh we have we didn't get to the into the into the orgy yet i'm sure it's coming as well as the meth i'm sure it's all coming um we had a magic vision where we saw our mom kill that lady that we met because the lady hid something and then mom said well no one can find it so i gotta kill you to ensure that no one will ever be able to find it again uh, what could they be talking about? We don't know. Where did mom go? We don't know. All we know is that we are... We're, we're meeting new people. We're meeting new people, making friends, and that's good for us. Good for us to get outside, get out of the house every so often, and meet George Washington. It's good for our social life. So what would we call... What would we say about the, the score for this? Um, well, let's see. Immoral... Um, well, it's a, it's a, it's a fancy rich party, so you know, you, you know that there's some, some orgies happening. We haven't seen them, but I mean, come on, come on, absolutely happening somewhere in this house. Suspense. Yeah. I mean, we don't know where, where's mommy. Uh, so that is, that is the main point of suspense we want to find mom and everyone knows mom but mom's gone and we don't we don't know where we just got to find her erotic points um well uh let's see um well the we can't deny well i mean yes obviously a lot of erotic points uh because we can't deny the animal magnetism of george washington so here we go here are the scores off the screen there fancy rich party which means orgies where's suspense is where's mommy george washington Rawr, is how you would you is how you would say that uh so that's our scores for uh the council episode one the mad ones and um it's uh it, it is a, a story that I think has gotten has gotten some of my my attention, piqued some of my curiosity, um, but I think that that is the end of our tryout. Uh, don't know how long any single episode is, but this game is five episodes long, and we at the very least finished the first part of episode one, which is free by the way. The first episode, you know, you pay the you play the first one for free, then they get you, they get you by paying money for the following episodes. So, that's our look at the council. And, um... We can only wonder what happened to Mom. Oh, also... Actually, hold on. I, I might have to give... Uh, neg hold on. I just remembered something. I might have to give negative erotic points due to... Uh, nightmare faces. I forgot about the nightmare faces, so there you go. Uh, the nightmare faces that we encounter sometimes. You also have to subtract some erotic points because of those. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen faces that were that disturbing. Not all the characters, but, uh, but some of them. You know which ones. That's been our look at the council. <laughs>